Okay, so we're going to do a tensor rotation. I hope that everybody's ready to, uh, to proceed in that way. So just get a blank screen here and see what we can uh, do to produce. <coughs> Anyways, all right, so we're going to do a tensor rotation. And the tensor rotation that we're going to do is we're going to consider a coordinate system. In this case, we're going to consider the coordinate system that... Uh, it seems to be easy, all right? So everybody's ready, tired of looking at a blank screen. Let me define a, a coordinate system up here. And we'll define as Y, Z coordinate system. We're going to define a little element in the Y, Z coordinate system. And we're going to define a stress of 20 MPa acting in that direction on my little element, pulling it in that direction. That's the only stress that we have, right? From that, we can write a stress tensor. The middle value will be 20. The middle value is sigma 2, 2, or sigma y, y, equal to 20. If it was written with a single subscript, it would be sigma 2 or sigma y. You'll see later in some classes that people will just use a single subscript. The other stresses are all zeros, because we only have a uniaxial stress. Essentially, we have a tensile stress applied in the y direction. Okay, so what I want to know is I want to know at some arbitrary orientation. For example, if I rotate this guy to here, if I rotate my coordinate system, so if I rotate it clock, counterclockwise to reduce y prime, z prime, something like that, this angle has been defined as capital phi, which is a counterclockwise rotation about x or x prime. If we were to rotate about that, I'd like to know how this element changes, what happens in the stresses. Well, it's pretty clear that if I rotate this far enough, in fact, if I rotate it 45 degrees, I expect to get shear stresses. And we know the shear stresses are going to pull that element along this way. So it's pretty easy to see that the shears that result are going to be like this, and like this, and like this. But I'd like to know how to write an equation for an arbitrary rotation. So not just 45 degrees, but actually an arbitrary rotation here. In fact, I might be interested in finding out how difficult it is to move dislocations and produce slip and actually produce shear, right? How much stress is being applied? How much stress is resolved on some other arbitrary orientation? And you may have already done this in MSC 230 for a slip system. Okay, so I want to be able to see if I can write that expression. So really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to write the expression that's going to allow me to find this particular shear stress. And this particular shear stress in that new coordinate system is going to be the combination of shear stresses that have to be equal, right? And they're going to be sigma 2, 3, and they're going to be sigma 3, 2. I'm just looking for the prime versions. Now, these guys have to be equal, right? These two couples, this couple and that couple, have to be equal. If they're not equal, then we're going to have a problem in the fact that it's going to start rotating, and I'm going to rotate at increasingly accelerating rate, okay? So these guys are always going to have to be equal. These guys lie in these two positions, of course, they're zero now. They'll start to get some value if we undergo this rotation. So we want to write that expression. So first off, let's write that rotation matrix. That rotation matrix is A, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, cosine, sine, minus sine, cosine, right, where all the angles are capital phi. So cosine, sine, minus sine, and cosine. Okay? That's the rotation matrix. That's how this one is particularly defined, and you can check it out. It produces, it makes y prime vary, and it makes z prime vary, but x prime stays the same. Okay, so let's find sigma 2, 3 prime, sigma 2, 3 prime. And I'm going to write out all the terms here, even though I know almost all of them except for one are equal to zero, but I'm going to write them all out. What I'm doing is I'm writing out the A's first. And then I'm going to write in each of these terms as they appear position-wise, just so it's easy to keep track of and there's nothing to, to worry about in terms of figuring out where they are, just by where their positions are in the matrix or tensor. If I do that, oops, sigma 3, 2, this is sigma 3, 1, sorry, sigma 3, 1. If I do that and I think about it, this one is 3, 2, and this is sigma 3, 3. 
Mm -hmm. I wish I had a little handy eraser. But anyways, all right. So I need to put the subscripts in. The first subscript on each of these is going to be determined by these guys. So this subscript, this 2, goes there, and this 3 goes there. So we expect to put a 2 and a 3. In fact, we can put a 2 and a 3 as the first subscript on each of these. Just like that. Kind of mind numbing. Not exactly exciting, but clear. And then the last two subscripts are determined by the same thing. This one is going to go here, and this one goes here. And this one goes there, and the two goes there. And this one goes there, the three goes there. This two goes here. One, two, 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 three. It's not that hard. Three, one, three, two, and three, three. Okay? And I'll put my little plus signs in here because it's the sum of all these guys. Now, for this particular case, all the other terms are equal to zero, so the only term we have to worry about is this one. Right? So the only thing we have to pull out is sigma 2, 3 prime, right? A2, 2, A3, 2, sigma 2, 2. We get these terms. A2, 2 is going to be the cosine of phi. And A3, 2. Right, A32 is this term, and it's the minus sine, so it's minus sine of phi times sigma 2, 2, which is 20 MPa. And then all, we can use our calculator or go to MathCAD or whatever, and we could find the value for sigma 2, 3 for any arbitrary rotation. Right? We could find how that changes. We could also do the same thing whatever angle we find here, we can also plug it into equations for each of the other terms. It's true we can do the matrix solution, but it's important, I think, to go through this once and actually see how to get each of these terms. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to collect a few of the other terms here that we might get using this particular set of information. So I'm going to clean the screen here. So sigma... Ugh. Let me grab my little pointer thing again. So sigma 1, 1 prime, right, is going to have an A and an A. The original stress was sigma 2, 2. Those 2s go as the second term here, and then these 1s go here. So A1, 2, if you look back at that rotation matrix I just had, A1, 2 is equal to 0, right, and A1, 2 is equal to 0. So this is equal to 0, and that makes sense, right? We had our little element. We have a stress applied in the y direction. Right? All we're doing is rotating about this. There's no way for this stress to end up with any component in the x direction. Right? So, so there's just no way that that's going to happen. So this term should be 0. That makes sense. We can also find how sigma 2, 2 changes with this rotation. Sigma 2, 2's expression is going to be given the original stress, then the effect of the rotation, so it's A22, A22. That term was cosine. So it's cosine squared capital phi sigma 22. We put in some arbitrary angle. We can find the, the value here. If we put in, if we don't rotate it at all, this term is 1 and it stays the same. Sigma 33 prime is going to be given by A32, A32. Oops, sigma 2. 2. So A32, A32, sigma 2, 2, the original stress. So this is going to pull that minus sine term. So it's going to end up being sine squared, capital Phi, sigma 2, 2. And that makes sense, right? If we put an angle in here of 90 degrees, this becomes 1, and sigma 2, 2 and sigma 3, 3 switch. What's happened is if we rotate this 90 degrees, y points this way and z points this way and that means the tensile stress would now be in this prime system where capital phi is equal to 90 degrees right 
the stresses have switched. Now it's pointing in this direction because we reoriented this little thing and rotated it 90 degrees. Okay, so I hope that helps.